Hi all, welcome to Angel GCP Data Engineering. So in this video, we will see a service called Secret Manager. Okay. So this service can be used to store and manage and access secrets. Okay. We will see them in detail. Okay. So so before going to the actual concept slide, so let us think this scenario, right? So for example, let's say we have a code. So it can be a Python or Java any code. From that code, we are trying to access a database, right? So inside that code, we will have to uh, set up the database configuration, right? So you will use the appropriate driver to set up the database connection, where it will ask you to provide the database user ID and password and its host and so on and so forth. In such case, you will be providing all those details, right? But it is not a good practice or a recommended practice to hard code your password inside a code. Right. To avoid that, what what we will do usually we will store that password uh, into some secure place or secure location. Right. So now you got it right from where I'm coming. So in that scenario, so the secret manager will help you to store that password. It can be a password or it can be any other confidential information. Right. Let us move to the concept slide. So as I already told this secret manager service will allow us to store and manage and access secrets. It will store that information in the form of binary blobs or also text strings. Okay. So, and it can be fully managed by Google cloud and also the access part of that secret manager will be done through IAM again, right? Identity and access management. So the user, whoever is having the appropriate permissions, they will only see that contents okay and uh, from the google cloud perspective the secret is a prog project level global object okay it contains metadata and also at respective versions you can even store your secrets in different versions okay uh, so this that particular version will have the actual secret data okay so will i will try to show you all those details while we are uh, going through that demo okay so when i say metadata so google cloud itself it has to store that information somewhere right so that location where it's storing that information is fully controlled by google cloud and as a user if you really want to store that particular secret secret in a specific location definitely you will have that option to do that okay so metadata includes replication location, labels and annotation which are associated with that secret, even permissions. Okay. Now coming to the use cases. So we have, as I already told, it basically used to store confidential information like passwords, API keys of an application and TLS certification, etc. Okay. So our main focus, right, to use the secret manager to store our database password right so in the next video maybe i will try to I, i'm going to do a video on access cloud sql using python client libraries there maybe i would be using the secret manager to store our database passwords right so so like that we do have a so many use cases right so you can use the secret manager appropriately right wherever it suits Okay, so going to the demo slide, right? In this demo, basically, we'll try to create a secret, right? And we'll try to store some Cloud SQL password. And by using Python client libraries, right? And we'll try to access that secret information, the data, and we'll try to print that data. Okay, so this is the demo. It's a simple demo, it won't take much time. Okay, I hope you are clear. So let us quickly move to the demo. Okay. So, okay, right now I'm in my Google Cloud platform. Okay. So, in the main page, go here, products, right? And then, so we have the segregation of the products. Okay. Here, we can come down and there is a section called security. Yeah, here click on the security okay here 
So, just ignore this uh, information, just come down here it is and under, under the product section here it is secret menu, click on that particular tab up and then you can see this particular page right secret menu is page. Now, we are going to create our secret right. So, it will display this page just give the name this name itself is a secret id ok cloud sql password ok this is the id of the secret. So, here you have a different option to upload your secret in the form of file or else a string ok. So, here it is a data, database password I am uploading or just mentioning it as a string ok this is my database password ok and then here we do have a different section to select based on your requirement you will have to select this options appropriately. Replication policy, so I already told by default Google Cloud will manage storing that secret in a appropriate location or region. So, it is up to you if you go for this option it will give you to store your secret in your uh, desired location or region right. So, that is where we have this option ok. Uh, I am not going for it. So, next encryption by default this is encrypted ok. So, it uses Google managed key. If you want to provide your own uh, encrypted keys right or customer managed keys you can go for this option ok and the rotation it also supports a rotation policy right. So, if you want to do that you can go for this option and notification if you want to get some notification if there is a change in the version or something you can go for this option and expiry. So, by default it never expires if you want the secret to be expired after certain period of time you can definitely go for this option right. So, and then labels. So, if you want to segregate few secrets into some group you can go for this labels option right and the annotations right. So, all these op op options are optional it is up to you based on your requirement you can go for it ok. So, now let me go and create my secret it has id and the value that is it simple secret create the secret. Now, the secret has been created you can see the version right you can create different versions as well based on your requirement ok. Go and click on this auction there you can see different options view secret value disable destroy right copy resource id. So, if you click on resource value you can see the value of that secret ok. So, now you know how to create the secret now we have to access this secret value into our program that is our main intention right that is our main use case. Now, for that so Google Cloud is already providing uh, the suitable client libraries right like uh, we do have a python and java different client libraries. So, so we are using python client libraries as part of this demo ok for that we have already written a code for that. So, this is already available in the Google Cloud official documentation you just go and check over there uh, in the secret manager section right right you can just I will go through this code slowly ok. So, here in order to use this libraries first of all you will have to install this dependency or this library that is Google Cloud secret manager using pip right. So, I am already uh, I have already installed it into my cloud shell environment right. So, that is why I am not going to install it again ok. So, this is the first step and the second step. So, this is a simple function where it takes project id, secret id and version. So, project id anyway our Google Cloud project and secret id is our secret name right here our secret id ok. Then uh, version id anyway this is the version id right if you go to versions it will provide you those details version id is 1 right. So, we are going to pass all those parameters ok and then we are just importing this particular library that is secret manager uh, creating client it is respective client and 
it takes the name in certain format so anyway you have already provided these details through this function inputs okay project id secret id and version id it will take that so that is the name and then this name will be passed as an argument thus uh, to this method actually okay that is client access secret version right so that it will try to access the underlying data okay then i'm trying to print this data by using this function right so here i'm calling that same function just by passing all these details project name secret id and the version okay so we can run this right so okay so simple so this is a script i have just run this authorize now you can see so this is our password right mm -hmm. just to make it user readable i've just appended one more text that is over here but in the program directly you will just make use of this particular password okay so if you go to the program again here in the print statement i have added this right so but actually in the program you will try to just capture this value into some local variable in the program and then you will try to make use of that variable right so this is how you can use secret manager to store your password not only password there are many more confidential information right it's like uh, api keys some certificates pertaining to that application so those can be stored and can be accessed through program so i hope this will help you okay and that's it for this video uh, we will meet in the next video thank you thank you very much for watching this video.